Greetings, church. Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio. Welcome to Holy Spirit Radio. I pray that your faith has failed you not. I pray that you know that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is closer than he ever has been, even than when we first believed. And I pray that you know he's coming soon. And I pray that you know he wants us to be free from all sin, all condemnation, and all bondage. Church, let us remember, it's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. Yes, beloved. We're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. Greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I pray all is well. Um, I pray that you've been um, strengthened with your families. I pray that you're okay. And I pray that you're being encouraged um, in the times and the season that we are in. Okay. Um, I pray that you are not shaking. And uh, I pray that you know that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus will never stop fighting for us. That he loves us even to the death on the cross, brothers and sisters. Let his peace be our encouragement no matter what circumstances we are facing. Facing. Um, not in the things of this life. Brothers and sisters, I have a word for you today. Brothers and sisters, I have a word for you today. Um, it's a it's a, it's a heavy meal, but it's definitely needed. It's definitely needed. Um, uh, but before we get into the word today, brothers and sisters, before we get into the word today, brothers and sisters, let's pray. Um, so our heart will be able to get into a place to receive all that the Lord has to give, to give to us today, okay? Let's pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent of our sins. Lord, please forgive us of our sins. Lord, help us. In this moment, prick our hearts, Lord, that we may be completely devoted to you, living to please you and not man, Lord. Lord, help us to grow closer to you. Help help us um, to seek you more than anything in this life, Lord. We pray right now that you would saturate our hearts and our mind in this moment. Prepare our hearts to receive your truth, to receive your word. Open our heart. Break every hard place, Lord, that would cause your word to be hindered. And Lord, we just pray right now that you would have your way. Speak freely. Speak what is on your heart, Lord Jesus. We just want to hear you speak to us and give us life by your word. And we love you so much. And we thank you for all that you do and all that you bring and all that you pour out. In Jesus' precious, holy, matches name, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, well, brothers and sisters, well, brothers and sisters, let's get into this word. And I thank all my brothers and sisters who are gathering right now in this moment. Um, um, because... Everyone the Lord have gathered gathering in this moment right now. Um, he's going to use y'all greatly in this hour. You know, most importantly, our personal relationship, getting us closer with him, our personal relationship with him right in this hour. But also that that uh, personal relationship may be exposed to others that they may see the cross in us. Okay. Brother, let's, let's get into this word. Now, as I've been, as I've been spending time with the Lord, the Lord been speaking to me. And the Lord says, son. In this life, there's many cares, there's many concerns, there's many worries, son. And he says, son, think about it. Um, a lot of things in this life, they're always fleeing, always moving. And he says, son, if you ain't careful about these things, then these things can choke my word in your heart. And he says, son, that I am always fighting for my bride. I'm always there for my bride. I love my bride even to the death on the cross. And I'm with her every day. I'm with her every day. Um, of her life, that she can have confidence, she can find hope, she can find peace, that I'll never leave her side, that she can just remain in me, remain in my love, and remain in my hope 
and experience my peace no matter what she go through. And as I was spending time with the Lord, the Lord was speaking to me. He said, son, the worries, cares, the worries, cares, and concern in this life, son, the fear, uh, the doubt, the uncertainty, a lot of things that are going on around you that is keep moving. These things are uncertain. But he says, son, there's one thing that is certain. That's my grace. There's one thing that is certain. That is who I am. And there's one thing that is certain that will never change. That is my word. And he says, son, if you trust in my word, then you don't have to worry about what is changing because you have found comfort in that which never changed. And that, that, that which never changed is me. He says, son, the reason why I'm keying in on these things to show you these things, because the worries, cares, and concern of this life will choke my word in you and will cause it to be unfruitful. And in this hour, there's a many things happening. There's many things in the hour that is causing this world to be shift and it's leading to the second coming of my return. But son, I want to key you in on what matter. What matters is your relationship with me and everything that I'm about to say to you, say with you in this moment. He says, son, you have to stay focused on the cross. Keep your eyes fixed on me because in this hour, things will come at you to try to choke my word so it would not, so it would be unfruitful. Okay. When we, when we hear about being choked, when we hear about something choking us, we hear about something grabbing our air supply or something clogging our air supply where we are no longer able to breathe properly. And if you're not no longer able to breathe properly, then that air can't pump and flow the oxygen in your heart. Your heart can't pump and function the way it uh, need to function because your air supply have been cut off. And the more your air supply is cut off, the less you can breathe. And the less you can breathe, then eventually you'll die because there's no oxygen flowing through your lungs. Oh, man. And the Lord said, the title of this message is Unstrangled. The title of this message is Unstrangled. Free yourself. It's time to repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Lord says, son, this message, what I'm giving you is unstrangled. Free yourself. Because right now, a lot of us in this hour are enslaved in our bondage, enslaved in the things that are going on around us, and they're strangling our hope. We are bound by our circumstances, bound by the things that are going on around us, and it is strangling our hope. And the Lord said, it's time to free yourself in me. It's time to free yourself in the revelation of who I am. Because as you get a revelation of who I am, then it can free you from being strangled. And in this hour, the government's uh, false prophets, a lot of things in this hour give you doctrine, give you things to try to strangle your hope, strangle your faith, strangle your air supply so you won't breathe for my glory. But he said, as my bride draw closer to me in this hour, then I will unstrangle her. I will remove every rope, every bondage that have been trying to cut off her air supply. And I will free her by consuming her with my love, consuming her with my righteousness, also consuming her with my correction because God goodness is what brings us to repentance. And he says, son, as I bring my bride to repentance, I am strangling her at the same time because I want to free her for my glory. And the Lord said, as we unstrangle ourselves, the Lord took me to the book of Mark 4, verse 19. And this is what the Lord said. The Lord said, the Lord was speaking right here. He said, he says, he says to them, he said, he was breaking down this parable. He said, these are the ones on the path the word was sown. When they hear immediately, Satan comes and take away the words that were sown in them. And these are the one, ones that were sown on rocky ground. When they heard the word, immediately they received it with joy. But when they, but but because they had no root in themselves, that it was short lived. When the pressure of persecution comes, the word of the word, they immediately stumbled of this age, the seduction, the wealth, desires, and the things choked the word and it became my fruit. Let me, let me repeat that. The Lord said, but they had no, because they had no root in themselves, geez, because they were not rooted in my word, that it was short lived, meaning it had no life span. It had no lifespan because they were not rooted in my word. And when pressure and when persecution came because of the word that I have taught them, they immediately stumbled. Oh man. It said, it said that it said, others, they were sown among thorns. These are the ones who heard the word, 
Here, key in on verse 19. But the worries of this age, the seduction of wealth, and the desires for the other things therein choked the word, and it became unfruitful. Oh. And the Lord broke this down. A key, key thing, he said, but the worries of this age. See, brothers and sisters, it is a paramount that we know what hour we are in because right now we're not in the same age that we once were. Now, since the time of Adam, Cain, and Abel, all the way up now, all the way up now, and it's our we at brothers and sisters, we are in a different age than we were in. We are in the age of the second coming of Christ Jesus, and the way things always have been is not going to always be. And the deception in this hour is that the world will try to paint a picture to make it make us think that it will always be the way it once were. But the truth in the matter is it will not always be as it is as it once were because we are living in a different age. Now, when it when whenever the age change, that means our perspective has to change. Whenever the age change, that means our perspective has to change. And whenever the hour change, that means our perspective has to change. Let me give you an example. Some of us that are teachers, a lot of things that we go through in this life, we know how it is at work. There are certain hours at work that are more relaxing. Otherwise, there's one hour you can be on cruise control. But the next hour, it calls you to be at full throttle because there's a greater urgency than the last hour that you were want in. See, because we are because the hour has changed, then there is a different page that we need to be on. Because if we try to live according to the same page that we once once were, then we are stumble in this hour that we are in. And right now, brothers and sisters, because of the age of this hour, these are three things that we need to be that we need to be pay attention to. But the baseline of it that we need to be rooted in Christ Jesus, because Jesus said, "Here's the thing: the temptation, the trial came." But the only thing that caused them to fault was where they was rooted at. Oh, man. The, the temptation came from, the temptation came on different types of grounds. The temptation, the temptation came no matter what ground people are on, but what caused a person to fall or not was what type of person, what, what, what was what they was rooted on. The question is, brothers and sisters, what are we rooted on today? Because depending on what we are rooted on, depending on if we will be strangled or not. Depending on what we are rooted on would de would be dependent on if we are unstrangled or not. Because Jesus said, because they was not rooted in my word, it caused them to be strangled. But brothers and sisters, God, our Lord, Savior Christ Jesus, want us to be unstrangled. He don't want us to be strangled. He want us to be unstrangled by being rooted in his word. Because, see, this world in this hour is going to try to tangle us. But if we stay rooted in the word of Jesus, then we will remain unstrangled. Because anytime you become strangled, you become into bondage. But anytime you are unstrangled, you are free because you are based in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So let me repeat that Jesus said, because they had no root in his word, the worries, the worthies, the worries of this age. See, right now you can see that this world, this world is panicking because of the worries and concerns of it. So there is worries of this age, church, that we cannot be worried like this world worried. Why? Because the enemy know that if he is the system of this world, and as we worry how this world worry, then guess what? It will strangle our faith. And Jesus wants us to be unstrangled so our faith will not be strangled. But he wants us to be unstrangled so our faith may be exalted. Because whenever you are unstrangled, you can breathe for God because the life of God is manifested in your heart and every member of your body according to his righteousness that come from heaven. Oh, man. But he said, guess what? The seduction of wealth. Now, look how wealth is seducing this world right now. Because the economy is being baffled, the seduction of wealth is at work. See, what do we compare it to? We compare the wealth of this world as a seducing spirit. Hear what I'm saying? Because right now in this hour, the, this, the, because right now in this hour, the wealth is being seduced. If man trusts in this wealth, then it will seduce them in their mind and their heart. <laughs> the Lord said, because of the seduction of wealth, because of the seduction of wealth and the desires of other things, it choked the world. So here's the thing. Not only do the seduction, the seduction of this wealth is not affecting people, their physical account, but it affect, affecting the spiritual place of man's heart.
So the Lord want us to key on these things so we will not be seduced by the worries and the seduction of wealth of this world. But he want us to be unstrangled by having a greater hope in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Because he said, guess what? If we become strangled by the worries, the cares of this world, then it will cause us to be unfruitful. Here's the last thing that is paramount and is powerful. Because Jesus is telling us this out of his love because he want us to be fruitful and not unfruitful. Jesus wants us to be fruitful and not unfruitful. Why is this important? Why is this important, brothers and sisters? Because if we become strangled, then we can't be fruitful. Okay, what fruitful is he talking about? Jesus wants us to be fruitful by obeying the gospel. Because what does it but it, it produces the fruit of the spirit in our heart. Love, joy, peace, righteousness, kind, kindness, self-control. All of these things produce the glory of God in our heart. And see, when we become consumed by this world and the seduction of the things in this world and the word of God becomes strengthened in our heart, then we can't be fruitful. We can't produce righteousness. We can't live for his glory because our faith is being strengthened. It takes faith to walk in the way of God. It takes faith to walk in the life of God. It takes faith to remain in the life of God. But here's the thing. The life of God give us oxygen to breathe, oxygen to breathe. So guess what? If we don't stay rooted in their word, then guess what? We will become strangled by wealth and the desire of the things of this world. See, right now in this hour, because things have been cut short in many ways, there's a greater desire to get back to the things that we want lost. Okay. So I'm not knocking these things, but what I am saying, if your heart is bound, if your heart is bound by these things, then blindly it would choke the word, choke the word in us, and we'll live by these things blindly, thinking we really live for God. And the Lord said, I want you to be fruitful. So you are bad crop 36 and a hundred times fold. A lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of time we look at, a lot of time we look at this context and think Jesus is just talking about a physical fruit or going out and making disciples. Yes, he's talking about a physical fruit, but also Jesus is talking about a spiritual fruit in our heart. That if in this hour, the word of God becomes stranger than us, then we won't bear fruit. You know what? We won't bear fruit that, that wells up into eternal life. What will happen is, We'll conform to this world and we'll begin to look like this world and live even more how this world. See, brothers and sisters, this world is going to is going into a deeper, dark place. And right now, what Satan is doing in this hour, he allowing fear to rise up to try to strangle, to try to strangle the word of God in our hearts. And if it gets strangled, you'll look to this world for a solution instead of God's word as solution. That's why Jesus said they hear the word, but because they had no root, it, it, it is short lived. See, God don't want his word to be short-lived in our heart, but long-lived by being the gospel. And see, in this hour, if the word is stranded in you, then you will turn from the gospel because you had no root. So Jesus wants us to be fruitful. He don't want it to be unfruitful. He wants us to be fruitful in his testimony. And right, and now he said, it's time for my bride to be awakened because I don't want you to be strangled. I want you to be unstrangled. And the only way to be unstrangled is to walk in faith. Free yourself from the, the cares of this world. The Lord said, free yourself from worries. Free yourself from the seduction of wealth. Free yourself from the desires of this world. Because if you don't free yourself from the desires of this world in this hour, they'll bring us into great bondage. And I'm not just talking about people in the world. I'm talking about us in the church. If our desires, if we begin right now in this moment, as this world is being shaken, begin to seek different desires outside of the Bible, then it will, it will enslave you to it and it will choke the word where you will no longer walk in the ways of God, but you will begin to walk in the ways of this world. Because right now, brothers and sisters, we're living in a time of one world government where they have an agenda to make man worship and live the way this world lived instead of the way, instead of the, way the Bible told them to live. That's why I so much push back in this hour because of the spirit of the Antichrist is at work and brothers and sisters in this hour. Right now, there's a spiritual agenda. Hear me, brothers and sisters. There's a spiritual agenda in this hour right now as we speak to make this whole world walk according to the way the world says it should walk in, in, uh, uh, instead of how the way the Bible says it should walk. And right now, church, the Lord wants us to be un strangled he wants to free yourself so free yourself from fear free yourself from worry free yourself from the desires of this life the question is how do you free yourself from the desires of this life there's only one way by faith in christ jesus our lord and savior as you allow his love to be perfected in your perfected in 
in your heart, or you allow his righteousness to increase his love to increase in you, then it will free you from the worries of this world that will strengthen your hope. Because guess what? The hope of God is not bound by this life because the hope of God comes from heaven. Okay. Then the next thing the Lord, the next thing the Lord took me to, he took me to the book of Matthew. The Lord took me to the book of Matthew chapter 13. And the Lord Jesus was speaking what the kingdom of heaven is like. The, the, the Lord Jesus was speaking what the kingdom of heaven is like. And Matthew 13, verse 4 to 4, this is what it said. Let's go. It said, verse 4 to 4, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like, tre is like, is like treasure, buried in a field that a man found and reburied. Then in his joy, he goes and sells everything he has and buys a field. Oh, man. The Lord Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a field. The man, the man found and reburied, found and reburied. Then in his joy, he goes and sell everything he has to buy this field. <laughs> Jesus said, "The kingdom of heaven is like hidden treasure." Why would the Lord Jesus? Say, why would the Lord Jesus say the kingdom of heaven is like hidden treasure? Because right now, you can look in this hour and people can see many things in this life that look like true treasure, but it's really false treasure. And according to the naked eye, it's hidden. But according to those that live by the hope, live by the hope of God, the power of God that is real, by, that live by the Holy Spirit, it is revealed through the Spirit. So it is hidden treasure because the life, the physical perspective of this world can't see that treasure. But according to those who live by the Spirit, it is revealed because that treasure is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. The kingdom of God is revealed. Through Christ Jesus is manifested in our heart. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that we may long to enter that eternal glory forever. Okay, Jesus said, "The kingdom of heaven is like, uh, uh, it's like hidden treasure." Brothers and sisters, let us not seek this false treasure of this life, but seek the hidden treasure that soon will be revealed at His second coming, and is already revealed right now in our heart through His testimony. Jesus. And Jesus noticed that Jesus said this man sold all he had to, refill, to, to receive that treasure. Brothers and sisters, let us pick up our cross daily. Let us, give, let us give away everything in this life that will strangle us by giving all the words that concern, all the words that cares and concern over this and over in this life over, over unto God. That we may live by the blessed hope that is in Christ Jesus, that that treasure will endure forever. Jesus said, this man sold all he had to receive for this treasure. Oh, man. Everything that we possess in this life is nothing compared to Christ Jesus who is soon to be revealed to, to us. Nothing in this life is worthy of the treasure that he have given us through his sacrifice, brothers and sisters. Jesus is worth giving over everything we have in this life because he is true treasure. What do we say, church? We say, let us not be bound by the false treasure, the things of this life. Because these things will consistently fade away. We can see the great evidence of that right now. How these things fade away right now. But the power of God that is in Jesus Christ endures forever. So we can see that God's word is not changing. God's word said all of these things will happen right now. And his word have not changed. But everything else is changing around us. So therefore, let us trust in the treasure. True treasure to come. And not the false treasures of this life. That we can't hold on to. That is like holding ice. Okay. The next parable that Jesus told us in parable of the merchant, the, he, Jesus told us a parable of the uh, merchant. He said, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of pearls, a merchant uh, in search of pearls. When he found one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. Oh, man. So now he went from a field, which is a, now he went for, went for a, 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 a field, then he went down to pearls. Oh, man. Because Pearl, pearl people people pearls per, we can look at pearls uh, uh we can look at pearls in a sense of a, a sense in a valuable a valuable that are precious so jesus would go from hidden treasure but then he would go to pearls oh. now you think about pearls pearls is something or jewelry is something that people take and hide in a safe jewelry chest and they associate that associate that with associate that with at a valuable commodity or if you go into different jewelry vaults or different stores that sell high price jewelry, they will light, they will lock these things away uh, in their vault because these things are high price. These are the things that they would not even put out on the shelf that people can see because they would be so afraid of somebody trying to take that right then and there. But rather, they will hide this back for people with a great 
uh, a great com a great uh, amount of money because they know that it's going to take a great amount. Of money. And uh, the Lord Jesus said that uh, you know the kingdom uh, the kingdom of heaven is 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 like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he found that one priceless pearl, he went and sold everything he had and bought it. So, brother and sister, as I was explaining, like some places won't even put those type of diamonds out because they are so precious. So, therefore, they keep it into a vault for someone that is sincerely uh, sure about buying these type of diamonds. And also, someone that search for diamonds are particularly searching for a specific type of diamond because it is so precious and it is so valuable. And Jesus said that he went and sold everything he had and bought it. Brothers and sisters, the kingdom of heaven is like a precious pearl. The kingdom of heaven is like a precious pearl. That it is worth giving all for to purchase that. The question is, brother, the thing is, brothers and sisters, we could never purchase that, but someone did. And that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that purchased that pearl that we may reap the harvest from it. He purchased that pearl so we may reap the harvest from it. The thing is, brothers and sisters, let us not be strangled but be rather unstrangled so we can flow through his righteousness and receive that precious glory of eternal life where we will be at with him by being faithful to his testimony. Okay. And the Lord Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts. Oh, man. He said the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king that wanted to settle accounts. Man, brothers and sisters, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Brothers and sisters, the question is, are our accounts settled? The question is, brothers and sisters, are our accounts settled? Okay. What do we compare it to? We compare it to a business transaction. In this life, there's many business transactions we make on a daily basis. And Sometime when your account is not settled, it'll go to the debt collection agency or it'll go on your credit because that account was not settled. And as that account is not settled, it will continue to, to it'll continue to knock your credit score down because you have not settled the debt that 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 debt is supposed to be paid. Brothers and sisters, today are our account settled. Today, brothers and sisters, are our account seldom because in this hour brothers and sisters it is paramount that our account be settled which is by being the gospel because it's our, if our account is not settled then we will be strangled by the things of this life because not only does our account being settled free us from sin but it also free us from the condemnation the worry and concerns of this life see settling your account take care of your sin but also take care of of the things that are broken in your heart. So the question is, brothers and sisters, are your accounts settled? If you take if you take if you take your last breath in this next moment, are your accounts settled? Are you living right for God today that will settle your account that when you stand before Jesus, he will say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Your account has been settled because you have faith in me. Oh man. Because the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king. It's like a certain it's like a certain king who wanted to set accounts with his servants. Brothers and sisters, Christ Jesus wanted to wanna settle his accounts with us. That all of us have an account with him, and that count must be settled because he is the judge over that account. He's coming back to judge those, judge all of those accounts that have not been settled. So, brothers and sisters. The question is, are our accounts settled today? Because as our accounts get settled today, it also uh, keep us on a daily basis that our life be transformed by his righteousness, that we can walk in peace and also take care of us forevermore. Okay? So, brother and sister, are your account settled? Okay? Because in this hour, brothers and sisters, we can see everything headed towards the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, brother and sister, and there will be there will be many people in the field. One left, one taken. The ones that will be left behind is those faith that was strangled. 
Because, see, if your faith becomes stronger, that means you won't endure to the end. That means you will be in the gospel for a season, but turn away from the gospel and never return because your faith became strangled by the desires of this life. But those who are unstrangled, who have been free in Christ, will endure to the end. And when Jesus comes, when, uh, when Jesus comes after everything is settled, then they will be raptured up. Because they was unstrangled. See, to be unstrangled mean you have true faith. But if you become strangled, it mean you don't have true faith. It's true, become strangled is not that I fall to make mistakes sometimes. Being strangled means I completely lose faith. I completely turn away from the cross that saved my soul from condemnation. So, brothers and sisters, in this hour, there's a spirit, brothers and sisters. There's a spirit of covetousness in this hour that is released in the earth right now that is out to make people covet the things of this world so that when the persecution and everything comes it will strengthen your faith because you really had hope in the things of this life brothers and sisters here what the holy spirit is saying to the churches brothers and sisters won't be taken away won't be left behind brothers and sisters let us not be left behind by disobeying the gospel because brothers and sisters, it is paramount right now in this hour that our faith not be strangled, but our faith be unstrangled. So brothers and sisters, let us free ourselves by being consumed by the love of God. Now, what would help what would help our faith be unstrangled? By knowing that there is no God like our God. Our faith can be con uns can be unstrangled by by Knowing that there's no God like our God. He is the only one and there's no one beside him. There's no one like our God. He is the only one. He is the only one and only true God. Every other God in this life is false. Every other religion false. There's only one true God. That is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And as we get to understand this, we get to understand it, that there is no God beside him. He is the one and only true God. And as we have that as our foundation in Christ, then our faith will not be strengthened. That means in this hour when they say that your job is your source, the money is your source, uh, uh, Everything in this life that we have to offer you from the government is your source. Then we won't believe that because we know that God is our source and not the idols of this life. Jesus, man. Why? Because we know God weighs us by our actions. See, God don't weigh things by the physical limit, the physical limitation of this life, but God weighs things according to the spirit. Spirit, because see, as we understand, out of every action, there's a spiritual, there's a spiritual implication. There's a spiritual act according to every physical reaction to every problem. So, brothers and sisters, what we have to understand that God is weighing man's heart according to the actions and the way they live. Okay. So therefore, as church, as we get to understand that there is no God like our God and there is no one beside him, then brother and sister, then our acts will be righteous and not unrighteous. And now they are, as they are righteous, it will keep us in peace. It will keep us in holiness. It will keep us in his truth because his Holy Spirit is guiding us into him. And see, brother and sister, what we have to understand, brother and sister, by him. Our actions are weighed. So by him, our actions are weighed, brothers and sisters. So brothers and sisters, let not our faith be strangled, but let our faith be unstrangled because our actions are being weighed. It said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So the only way to please God is by faith. Well, if we allow our faith to become strangled, then we can't please God. And the only way to please God is by obeying the gospel. So we have to allow our faith to be unstrangled because when you strangle something, it can't grow. And see, if we have faith as tiny as a mustard seed, and we walk in that faith, allowing God to produce his love in our heart, then it will grow so mighty, and it will keep us walking in him. And as we walk in him, our actions will be cons consistently covered by his grace, not unto unrighteousness, but unto obedience. So, brother and sister, by his, by his grace, he strengthened us. But also, that same grace is judging our actions and weighed in the balance of his word. Brothers and sisters, the Lord took me to 2 Samuel. The Lord took me to Samuel, um, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, he took me to the book of Samuel, and he showed, he was taking me to uh, Eli's sons. And Eli's son, they was uh, transgressing, they were transgressing the offering of the Lord. And because of that, God judged those brothers because they did not listen to their father's word. Now, their father came and gave them a word, but they still rebelled against their father's word. They transgressed the offering 
even though their father had gave them a word. And as a result, God judged them because they transgressed the offering. And as a result, they caused the people of God to transgress the offering. Oh, man. Now, right here in the book of Samuel, God right here was revealing the gospel to us. Eli came to his sons and said, hey, what are you doing? And they, was, they rebelled against the Father's word. They rebelled against the Father's word. Well, right now in this hour, many are, many, many in this hour. So, brothers and sisters, as they transgressed by disobeying the Father's word, they transgressed the offering and God's judgment. Brothers and sisters, let us not transgress the God, transgress the offering. offering. God gave us an offer from heaven, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, brothers and sisters. So let us not transgress the Father's offering by disobeying his word. And that word is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And the Lord said to me, Lord of flock, fear not. For the Lord hath bestowed his love upon us in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. That if we remain in that love, we shall never fail because he never failed. Therefore, let us walk in obedience and remain in obedience. And the Lord said, Lord of flock, fear not. For I am with you even to the end of this age. And, and, I, and I leave you with this warning, brother and sister. I leave you with this warning. There is a spirit of covenant in this hour that will lead men astray. Okay? Church, let's be cautious. Let us be aware by allowing Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, to be, to be perfected in us through the gospel, brother and sister. Okay? Let his love be perfected in us through the gospel. Okay, brothers and sisters, because brothers and sisters, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in this hour, we are nearing the second coming of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. And we are living in the most excited time that we can ever imagine because we're about to see the coming of our Lord, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Be unstrangled. Free yourself from the desires of this life. Let us not transgress the offering of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ. Let's walk in full obedience to the gospel because it's the only way of life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Brother and sister, our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus sitting on a throne in heaven, looking in the earth for those who have true faith in who he is in the revelation of his testimony. And brother and sister, the revelation of that testimony set us free from every bondage in this life. And we need him in this hour. The only way you are making and survive in this hour is through the gospel, brothers and sisters. Hear me. We are in the darkest hour this world have ever seen. And everything through the government, through the politics is conjuring right now in this hour. Right now in this hour, there's an agenda that has been sent out. Okay, because the Bible, the, the, the Bible teaches that the, the weapons of our welfare are not carnal, but mighty in Christ Jesus to put mighty in Christ Jesus to pull down every stronghold. Right now, in this hour, brothers and sisters, there was a hour. This is an hour where they are trying to desensitize the church, brothers and sisters. Where they're trying to desensitize the church, brothers and sisters, to make us conform to this world. And the only way to escape is through the gospel. You gotta think about why. You got to think about why in the store they want us to be six feet apart, brothers and sisters. Hear what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. There's a greater thing going on in the spirit. You got to think, why Why not five? Why not five feet? Why Why six feet? Why six feet? Well, I mean, why six feet? Why can't be five feet? Why can't be seven feet? Why can't be ten feet? Why? Because the spirit, the, 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 the Bible tells us tell, there's a time coming where they will issue the mark of the beast, brothers and sisters. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Hear what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. And right now in this hour, this is just a desensitization to desensitize people. So when they get to, when they when they roll out what they really want to wild out, you will be already conformed to it in your heart already. Why is this important? It's important, brothers and sisters, so our faith will be unstrangled. Right now in this in this in, in this hour, brothers and sisters, many of believers, our faith have been strangled by cares, concerns, and worry. And right now we are in a hour where all of these things is gonna come crashing down the worries and stuff to try to, to break your faith. But brother, be brothers and sisters, be unstrangled that you may live for the brother, live for the glory of God. Brothers and sisters, free yourself, okay? This is all I have for you today, brothers and sisters. I pray uh, that this word was a blessing to you, and I pray that it keep you in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. In the righteousness of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, is the faithful witness, brothers and sisters. Let us obey that word.
Let us take heed to the word that we may receive everlasting life in him when we come. If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord, I thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever believes in me, whoever believes in him, Jesus said, Whoever believes, excuse me, said, Whoever believes in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Um, excuse me, brother. So I'm going to repeat this. Said, I believe that you sent your one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. Our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is seated right hand of the Father in heaven right now. And he, he just accepted you into his kingdom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven. You did the best thing you can ever do in your life. Now go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. Okay? And he will lead you to true churches. Because there are false churches, but there are true churches that the Holy Spirit will lead you to. Okay, brothers and sisters? And let us remember, it's time for us to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, brothers and sisters. And brothers and sisters, we're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. Okay? And let our mindset be, we would rather have nothing in this life and, and be with Jesus when he comes. Than to have everything in this life and miss Jesus when he comes. Because true success is not bound by all you have in this life, but it's by the one who will receive you into life when he comes. And true success is not when you get all the things in this life. Because you can get all the things in this life. And if you and when Jesus comes, you don't go with him, you failed. But you can have nothing in this life. When he comes, you go with him, and you will say smash your success. But smash your success because you live to glorify his name. Brothers and sisters, remember, Christ Jesus loves us so much. And see you next time. Brothers and sisters, goodbye. And brothers and sisters, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that the Lord want to reveal and say to y'all. Um, and the Lord want to have me share a lot of those things on Holy Spirit Radio, uh, Holy Spirit Radio onecom The Lord have me uh, teach online radio. It's on uh, it's on iHeartRadio. It's on Spotify. On, on many different things, brothers and sisters. And brothers and sisters, soon we're going to go to get on, gather on there soon. It's going to be a period of time where the Lord will not have me speak online, but we're going to go speaking there to say things um, that because believe it or not, brothers and sisters, there's a lot of censorship going on right now where governments and different social media platforms are trying to silence the truth. They're trying to silence the people that's going to tr teach the truth and reveal to the people what is really going on. So they want to silence them. They want to muzzle them their words. So they'll cut their videos. They'll cut videos. They'll edit videos. They'll do many things to try to hinder their word. So, brothers and sisters, there's a time coming where we're going to gather. The Lord is saying, showing many things before they happen, brothers and sisters. Like some of the stuff you're seeing on the news, the Lord have showed months ago in vision. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It's about what the Lord is saying to his church in this hour. So, brothers and sisters, I just encourage y'all to soon gather with me on Holy Spirit Radio one dot com because in a while I will no longer be speaking online. But the Lord would drive me to a place to be able to speak on there to say all what the Lord have to say. Um, to his children because brothers and sisters the hours is dark and it's time for us to shine brighter so brothers and sisters be encouraged and know the Lord Jesus love you so so much brothers and sisters and I love you as well as a brother in Christ brothers and sisters remember Christ Jesus is coming soon let us be unstrangled and free from this world see you next time brothers and sisters goodbye Thank you for tuning in to Holy Spirit Radio. Thank you for tuning tuning in to Holy Spirit Radio. Thank you for tuning in to Holy Spirit Radio. I pray that this word was a blessing to you. I pray that it leads you. I pray that it guides you into everlasting life through the testimony of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Church, let us remember. It's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting.